Hello everybody, welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. After last episode, we finally made it back to the Market District of Denrim, where I did hand in all of the quests that we had completed off-screen. Also, Alistair leveled up, and so is able to wear the Warden Commander armor that we found in, uh, in the abandoned Warden Keep. So that's really cool, he's looking great. He has a uh, heavy dwarven helm to match, so it doesn't quite match the rest of the armor, but I think this armor is cool as heck and should hopefully protect Alistair and make him a good tank. So, we're finally done in Denerim for now. I'm sure we'll be back. Um, but we are going to head out of the city and try to follow the trail left behind um, by the people searching for the ashes of Andraste to cure our friend Arl Eamon. I say our friend even though we've never actually met the guy, but apparently he's a good guy. <laughs> now is better than later. So, we're going to the wide open world, and then we're going to, uh, is it the village of Haven? One second. Yes, the village of Haven. So if that's the case, actually, as you can see on the map, Haven is all the way over here. For some reason, I thought it was on the, on the east side, so it would be close to us, but it's actually not. Um... And so, obviously, we have to pass a lot of things to get to it, so I'm kind of wondering if there's anything kind of en route that we should stop and check out. So let me just check out our journal here for a second. Okay, so there are a few quests that we can kind of do en route. Remember, we did sort of get a tip-off about where some of Logan's forces are, so we should head there and disrupt some of his forces. Um, we've got a notice of death to deliver to a lady named Irenia in Redcliffe, so we'll do that. As well, Sten's sword is somewhere near Lake Callanhead, apparently. That's that's where he said he saw it last. So we'll make three stops and slowly head west and uh, get to our eventual destination of Haven. So first up, we will actually travel to this right here, which says Civil War, which I believe is the location of Loghain's forces. So let's go there first. And intercepted on the road. Oh, whoa! Just wild abominations? That seems really random. But okay. I guess someone was out here practicing magic and it went awry. Turn them into this. Ow! That was unnecessary. Oh, look who it is! It's Reynold! We had a quest to find him. And he has a journal, a Master Mage's journal. The last part outlines a failed pursuit of his misguided apprentice. Let's read that entry. Reynolds, please, should you find this note, I beg you, please complete my task. I'm Reynold, Master Mage and mentor to the misguided fool, Hesir. It seems that my young apprentice got mixed up in magic unmentionable, for which I pledge to pursue him to the ends of the world. If you are reading this, then my apprentice caught up to me and choked for me my last breath. I beg you to delve into this ancient elven forest and end the threat of the abomination my beloved apprentice has become. Should you do this, then I beg you, keep a feldspar ring you find on my apprentice's finger as token of my thanks. May you never know profound failure such as that I feel as I write this. Well then, okay. Um, so there is a, a, a blood mage on the loose. So, let's see if we can track down this apprentice. Is he this way, or...? No, there, there must be a marker on the map, I guess. If we just check the quest really quick. Yeah, we found Reynolds' body. This was a mage's collective quest. We found Reynolds' body along with the abomination that killed him. So we don't actually have to even go um, find the apprentice. We can just return to the collective for the rule board, but I guess if we do travel into the elven forest, which we will have to do later, we will keep an eye out for uh, any wandering apprentices. <laughs> for now, get your asses off Van Talman's land. We won't bend needle again. Logain is the regent. He demands you. We're not Orlesian lick spittles. We owe no man our allegiance. Leave. Take their lands by force, men. The regent's orders. No! We will not let Loghain take the lands of innocent men. We're here to help! Oh 
we are overwhelming Logan soldiers right now. This isn't even close. Rally men! Finally the sergeant! Logan has no hold over these lands! Nice. Dunzo. We showed those Logan upstarts. We sure did, didn't we? That's it. I gotta be honest. I thought maybe we'd have like a chat or something, but okay. Short and sweet. That's fine. We hurt Loghain and his forces and protected the realm, so I'll take it. That's a victory for us. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All in a day's work. All right. So now we will head to uh, the Lake Callanhad docks. Let's see if we there's any. Um, hint of Sten's sword around here. He mentioned he was near Lake Callanhad when he lost it. So we'll just see what we can find. Oh, already. Got an exclamation point. Isn't that the point? A little something extra for friendship. Oh, that's me pa passing in the quest to the Mages Collective, so never mind. Never mind. I mean, we still got one gold, so that's good. But, oh, we've got some people in here. Welcome back to the Spoiled Princess. How may I serve you today? Is there a Brother Genitivi here? Brother Gen... Uh, no. Uh, no, of course not. I've never heard of him. What about the imposter known as Waylon? Who? Listen. The person you're looking yeah, for... Yeah, so remember, is this is where they tried to get us to come looking for Genitivi, but we saw through that ruse. I'll say, are you in some trouble? You can trust me. They're watching me. Speak oh god. Hang on, we might be able to get some more information here about what's going on. They're looking for anyone asking for this brother Genitivi. They told me to act like nothing's wrong and just deny ever having seen the brother or the knights. Is there anything I could do to help you? What can you do? I do what they want because they'll hurt my family. I have no choice. You should be on your guard and leave quickly. I don't know what happened to the knights, but I doubt it was anything good. I said, I, I promise this will be sorted out soon. Goodbye, and make her turn his gaze on you. Okay, well, we knew Brother G and TV wasn't here, but that just confirms it. Yes. And this is the lady we need to deliver a letter to. I have a letter for you from the Blackstone Irregulars. All right, let me take a look. Why? What did he do to deserve this? Okay, so that's another quest done. However, I don't see any um, signs of Sten Sword. Oh! These must be the guys who were uh, keeping an ear out for Brother Jenna TV askers. <laughs> Let's get rid of them so the innkeeper can live his life. I love how the uh, Templar is actually helping us out here. The one that was on duty for the mage, the mage's circle. He just comes over and throws in a few punches. Thanks, sir. Now, do you guys have anything on your body? Any information? Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? Be quiet, Talon. No, but he does have ceremonial armor, red steel armor. That's pretty good. All right, well, we cleared that threat out, at least. Um, and with that, I guess we'll be on our way. Oh, wait a minute. Who are you? Back off! I was here first! You haven't seen a sword lying around here, have you? Why, you looking to buy one? Only if it's a Kunari blade. A Q-what? Canary, you know, the murderous horde in the far north? Well, honestly, I don't have any swords. The spot was picked pretty clean when I got here. I got part of a glove. The wolves didn't chew too badly, though. I think it was a glove, anyway. I know, don't say it. I got cheated. I knew the guy who was here before me. He sold me this spot. Said he found giants and all kind of crazy valuables. He didn't mention that he'd taken everything but the bones and the dirt already. His name's Ferrin. Squirrely little bastard, if you ask me. 
Which you didn't, but I said it anyway. <laughs> Where is he now? He was going to Orzammar, he said. I imagine he's gotten there by now. If you find him, tell him I sent you. It'll scare the piss out of him. <laughs> All right, we'll do. All right, so I guess that's where Sten's sword ended up. So we will continue our investigation when we end up in Orzammar. For now, we have one more stop to make in Redcliffe to deliver one of those missives. And now we're in Redcliffe, and we will find the poor wi widow that we have to deliver the unfortunate news to. Looks like this is the poor lady here, Irenia. Yes. I have a letter for you from the Blackstone Irregulars. All right, let me take a look. No, I can't believe this, I won't. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, ma'am. That is all of the notices delivered, so we should be able to turn in that quest now as well. The captain sends his regards. Three gold, hell yeah, and an achievement. All right, so we're done here, so let's uh, get, get moving to Haven and continue on the path of those sacred ashes. Before we headed to Haven, I figured we'd stop into the camp and rest up, and as soon as we entered the camp, Morgan came to speak with me. She says she's been studying her mother's grimoire and wants to share with us what she found, which I definitely want to know. So let's say, what did you find? Tis not what I expected. I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands, but this is not it. Yet you look disturbed. Disturbed? Yes, perhaps that is the right word. One thing in particular within her writings disturbs me. Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. Spell of immortality? Oh, if only twere so. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. There are stories of these. Uh oh, I the think I know where this is going. Legend, yet I have never seen a one, and always wondered why not. And now I know, they are all Flemeth. When her body becomes old and wizened, she raises a daughter, and when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her own. Oh my God! What? You had no idea? I'm so sorry. Do not be sorry. I am not. I am angry. There is only one possible response to this. Flemeth needs to die. I will not- Well, that escalated out. quickly. <laughs> ...waiting to be filled. Flemeth must be slain, and I need your help to do it. Kill Flemeth? Isn't that a little extreme? It may seem so. If you think of Flemeth as a mother, think of her instead as an ancient abomination that intends to use her own flesh and blood to extend her life beyond all natural limits. She did not wish anyone to get a hold of this information, least of all me. Now I have. If I do not act on what I know, then more the fool am I. Perhaps you should talk to her about it first? And what would that do? At best, I would receive pointless reassurances. At worst, Flemeth would imprison me once she became aware I know what I do. I know my mother well enough to be confident she would show no mercy when it came to her own survival. I must do the same. Look, I'm not trying to justify Flemeth's actions here. That is scary. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to resolve maybe some potential mommy issues, but, uh... <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm not gonna let Flemeth take over your body. So don't worry, I, I'll help you if I can. Then what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari Wilds without me. If I am present when she is slain, I cannot be certain that she will not be able to possess my body right then. So I must remain at the camp, confront her, and slay her quickly. I doubt she will truly be dead even then, but it will take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that is even possible. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. With it, I can defend against her power in the future. Everything else in her hut is yours. Goodness gracious, do I have a time limit on this? Not really, but the sooner the better, no? Okay, I'll see what I can do. I am grateful. The sooner this can be done, the sooner it will set my mind at ease. Seeing as we weren't able to clear out a warehouse full of blood mages, I have a feeling that we are not quite up to speed, not quite strong enough to, to fight Flemeth, the Witch of the Wilds, yet, so... Luckily, Morrigan assured us this is not time-sensitive. However, that is quite the revelation. 
Can you imagine it, finding a, a journal or a diary from your mother in which it states that she consumes all of her daughters to be immortal? That's that's heavy, Morgan. I I'm sorry. Do you, is there anything else you want to talk about? I await your command. I'd like to discuss something personal. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Why are you still here? Because I need your help with my mother, of course. Why else? Why? Do you wish me to leave? I can do so if you prefer. No, I don't want you to leave. Then I assume our discussion ends here. Okay, that was short and to the point and got minus 10. I wasn't telling you to leave. I was just wondering. Okay, anyway, she's still warm with us, so that's good. <laughs> oh, me and Morgan really have a love-hate relationship. Enchantment? Yes, please, Sandal. I'd like some enchanting done. Enchantment! So it looks like that axe we gave Alistair can actually hold two enchantments, so that's very cool. Let's do plus three cold damage. And plus two fire damage. So it's somehow hot and cold. The ultimate axe, which actually fits with its lore, how, how it was kind of hot and cold. Double enchanting for Alistair's axe, alright. Alright, Stan, let's chat with you next. You called. I wanted to discuss something you mentioned. Speak, then. Oh, never mind. I have nothing to discuss. Then I suggest we move on. Uh, okay. Uh, can I say I have a question? I am hardly surprised. Do you find Ferelden very strange? To put it lightly, no one has a place here. Your farmers wish to be merchants. The merchants dream of being nobles, and the nobles become warriors. No one is content to be who they are. Don't the Canari ever want to change their lot in life? What does that accomplish? The farmer who buys a shop is never a merchant. He is always a farmer turned merchant. He carries his old life with him as a turtle carries its shell. Maybe he was meant to be a merchant. Meant by whom? And if that were indeed his purpose, why did that mysterious source of meaning not make him so to begin with? You think birth should determine your destiny? <laughs> destiny? Destiny is superstitious nonsense. Life is not a journey that ends with you arriving or not arriving at the proper destination. Life is what you do. Life is the duties you fulfill. You don't think happiness is important? You can learn to find it in doing your duty, in serving your people. There is no need to search for it. Shall we move on? Uh, is there anything you like about Ferelden? There is... Interesting food here. You have a thing. It doesn't have a word in the Kunari tongue. Little baked things, like bread, but sweet and crumbly. Cookies? Yes. We have no such things in our lands. This should be remedied. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Shall we move on? I love how he uh, is so stern and, you know, what he thinks of life and duty, but yet cookies really get his soft spot. <laughs> Something I can help with? Uh, I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? What would someone like you be doing in Lothering's Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? You know, a beautiful, charming woman like yourself. And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering Cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, they were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? Okay, girl! <laughs> uh, I'll say... Those initiates can have been more lovely than you, though. We're gonna lay it on kind of thick here. Flatterer. I, however, did not take vows, and so perhaps I am not as enigmatic. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. Affirmed? We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. Interesting. So that, that matches up with sort of the Chantry hierarchy that we learned about in one of the Codex entries earlier. So I'll say, what did you do before that? I was a traveling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. Traveling minstrel, interesting. And they rewarded me with applause and coin. 
and my skill in battle. Well, it's quite the qu career change than to travel, yes? stay with the chantry. Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Okay. It's nice to hear more about you. Liliana's codex entry uh, got updated and said there's more to Liliana than had even been apparent at Lothering, however. She spent much of her life as a bard in Orlay, a minstrel assassin and spy employed by the nobles of Valroyo and their elaborate games of intrigue. Okay, she didn't mention that when she just told us she was a minstrel. Apparently she was like a minstrel assassin. Liliana takes care to honor the Lothering cloister that brought that took her in and keeps symbols of Andraste's blessings close to her heart. Alright. Oh, right, we need to check in with Wynn. Remember she got lightheaded and, like, passed out after one of the battles? So, tell me, how did you become a Grey Warden? Duncan took me from the alienage and saved me from prison. Ah, I see. Do you mind if I ask what you did? I killed the Arl's son for hurting my friends and family. Oh, I... I'm sorry. I should not have brought it up. Must be an unhappy memory. It's alright. You didn't know. It sickens and saddens me to hear what men in power inflict on those who they ought to serve and protect. I've heard stories that some Templars who hunt Maleficarum do not end the hunt with a clean death. That they subject the victim to countless abuses and indignities before they finish it. But this is just a rumor. Regardless of what happened in your past, I am glad you found a place with the wardens, as I'm sure you are too. I just hope that I can show the strength that Duncan saw in me. Sometimes it gives me comfort to think that everything will end up the way it's supposed to. That it will be all right. You were chosen. You survived the joining when others did not. Perhaps it was meant to be. When you are the best. She's such a nice lady. Okay, we talked about me, now we need to talk about you. I must ask. Oh, what no, she wants to talk more about me. Um, what does it mean to me? It means I've been chosen to do something important. There's that, of course. But there's more to being a Grey Warden than killing Darkspawn and saving the world from the Blight. Ultimately, being a Grey Warden is about serving others. About serving all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. You mean to say I serve as a protector? As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men. And you guard them because their continued existence is more important than you are. Thus, it is you who serve. Not they. I suppose that makes sense. A good king. A true king who cares for his land. Uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. The king who does not do this. Who believes that he is entitled to his when power. Wynn is out here just shooting wisdom at us this evening. <laughs> for his own means. Is a tyrant. Many kings are tyrants. And the country suffers for it. If you cough, cough, Loghain, cough. And your actions affect only you. Then you may do as you wish. But if you have power, influence, and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water in a clear, still pond. The drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. Think of how far they will go, how wide they will become, how will they affect the pond. But I've lectured enough for today. I should stop before I wear out my welcome. It was an interesting lecture, don't get me wrong, but I just really need to ask if you're okay. You're quite taken with each other, aren't you? What? You... Who, who... Who are you referring to? The dialogue option says Liliana and me. Ooh, hang on, someone knows about my crush on Liliana? I'll say, you, you know about my crush on, on, on the girl over there? I've seen the way she looks at you. She likes me too. This is the first time hearing of this. Finds a way to place herself next to you. What? So what were you gonna say about us? I've noticed your blossoming relationship, and I wanted to ask you where you thought it was going. Leliana is a remarkable girl, sincere and guileless, and she has opened her heart to you. I would not like to see her hurt. 
Uh, oh my god, I'm so flustered. I, I didn't expect to get called out on my crush. I'll say I'd never hurt Liliana. Not intentionally, no. But there is great potential for tragedy here. For one, or both of you, you are a Grey Warden. You have responsibilities which supersede your personal desires. I can handle my responsibilities and my relationships. Love is ultimately selfish. It demands that one be devoted to a single person who may fully occupy- I love how many lectures I've gotten here when all I wanted to know is if she was okay. <laughs> a Grey Warden cannot afford to be selfish. You may be forced to make a choice between saving your love and saving everyone else. And then what would you do? The classic Batman or Spider-Man dilemma. Uh... You're making things sound a little more dire than they are. I haven't even told her that I like her yet. <laughs> I've only flirted with her and gave her gifts. Nothing is certain. Not in these times. Thank you, you for the warning, but I feel like it's a little too soon. I want you to be aware of this. Um, I'll say... I'll consider what you've said. I am just trying to minimize the suffering that may come to either of you. I have given my I think Wynn wants me to stay to single forever. But anyway, Win, fourth time's the charm. Can you tell me if you're physically okay? What's on your mind? Are you feeling better now? Oh, yes, and thank you for asking. I'm feeling much better today. Um, I'll say please let me know if there's anything I can do. Well, thank you for your kindness, my dear. It certainly warms these rickety old bones. Okay. <laughs> I really thought there was going to be more of a conversation about what was ailing her, but it seems she was tired from all the lectures and philosophical debates she was engaging me in, so... Alright, thanks for the chat, Win. Is that a giant piece of cheese? What the heck?! That cheese is huge! Liliana, is, is that your cheese? Wow. Alright, next up is Evron. Here I am. Uh, I want to discuss something personal. Oh, this should be good. What would you like to discuss? <laughs> the only option I have is I want you to leave. Wow, that's savage. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Alistair? Something on your mind? I have some questions. Of course. Um... I wanted to ask him about his sister, but we don't have that option. I'll say... Why'd you keep your birthright a secret? You never ask? Do you not trust me? I thought we were friends. We are friends. I didn't mean to... It wasn't supposed to... Oh, let me explain. The thing is, I'm used to not telling anyone who didn't already know. It was always a secret. Even Duncan was the only Grey Warden who knew. And then after the battle, when I should have told you... I don't know. It seemed like it was too late by then. How do you just tell someone that? I mean, that's completely fair, honestly. <laughs> like, how do you- someone you literally just met after enduring a tragedy, then you just bring up, yeah, I'm the bastard heir to the throne. I guess I can understand your points. I... I should have told you, anyway. It was important for you to know. I guess part of me likes you not knowing. Why? What happens when people find out? They treat me differently. I become the bastard prince to them, instead of just Alistair. I know that must sound stupid to you, but I hate that it's No, it is completely life. understandable. I 100% understand I everything you're saying. I to be king. The very idea of it terrifies me. Um, I'll say... It doesn't sound stupid at all. For all the good it does me, my blood seems certain to haunt me no matter what I do. I guess I should be thankful that Arl Eamon is far more likely to inherit the throne. If he's all right. I hope he's all right. And for what it's worth, I'm sorry for not telling you sooner. It was a dumb thing to do. Literally nothing to apologize for. Don't worry about it, Alistair. No harm done. I guess it's kind of a relief that you know now. Let's go. All right, I think that's everybody. Well, except for poor Conehead over here. Muffin, can you stop barking? Muffin digs furiously in the ground at your feet. I'll say, trying to find a way through the earth, are we? <laughs> Have fun there, Muff. Alright, have fun then. Silly doggo. 
All right. It's enough reminiscing at camp. Let's get our party together. Indeed. Yes. Yes. And head to the village of Haven, a remote village nestled in the mountains. It's not even marked on most maps. This is apparently where Brother Genitivi was coming to look for the urn. What are you doing in Haven? There's nothing for you here. I have business here. No, you do not. I would have been informed if someone was expecting a visitor. Is there a Brother Gen TV here? Who? Perhaps revered Father Eirik will know of whom you speak. Unfortunately, he's ministering to the villagers at the moment and cannot be disturbed. Revered Father? I've never heard of this. It's always been thus in Haven. We do not question tradition. Are your traditions very different from ours? Our ways are not the ways of the lowland cities. Okay. Uh, very well. Excuse me. You may trade for supplies at the shop if you wish. Then I suggest you and your companions leave. Did it just get a lot colder, or is it just me? <laughs> Nope, this place seems very sus. I have a sneaking suspicion that the village of Haven may not be what it seems to be. We'll call it a day here, guys, but the party has made it to the village of Haven, following along in Brother Genitivi's tracks. Hopefully we'll figure out what in the world is going on here and maybe hunt down that pesky urn of sacred ashes. Until next time, everybody, take care, and I'll see you for the next episode of Dragon Age Origins.